It has more aliases than a supervillain. The Throne, the Lou, the John, the Outhouse, the Potty. You get it. But when it comes to forensic science, is disposing of evidence really as easy as just flushing it down the toilet? You might want to hold your nose for this one. Forensics case number 27, flushing your stash. Bad guys usually commit a crime in two parts. Number one <laughs> is committing the offense itself, which is pretty straightforward if all goes according to plan. It's covering your tracks that gets tricky, which is why number two <laughs> is always such a mess. Wait. Movies and TV shows are notorious for showing criminals flushing any evidence they can down the toilet during a raid. But does this really thwart crime scene investigators from collecting discarded evidence? Well, just because it's been flushed doesn't always mean it's gone. Dumped evidence will almost always leave behind traces that can be collected forensically. Residue can be left on or at the bottom of the bowl, on the seat, or sometimes in the water itself. Also, opening a baggie or container in order to flush its contents, say powdered drugs for example, will almost always have an aerosol effect, spreading particles that can be located and collected by crime scene investigators. If a criminal succeeds in flushing incriminating evidence down the commode, it can get caught in the toilet trap, or trapway, which is that curvy channel inside the base of the toilet that leads from the bottom of the bowl to the drain pipe. It's also very important to remember that the toilet isn't the only household accomplice when it comes to disposing of evidence. Criminals have been known to throw evidence down garbage disposals, leaving residue on the blades, in the sink, and even on the dishes for investigators to find. They also have been known to hide things in plain sight using false containers and fake outlets. And sometimes, they just throw it in the trash. While it may be out of sight, it becomes fair game for investigators once it's out for collection. Search warrants are signed off on by a judge before a raid takes place. This gives investigators time to prepare for these kinds of scenarios and potential hazards by turning off the power and the water in some cases prior to making entry. To take advantage of the element of surprise, raids are conducted at night or early in the morning. And unlike what you see in movies, they usually last less than a minute. This catches perpetrators off guard without giving them much of a chance to tamper with evidence. Crime scene investigators aren't afraid to get their hands dirty, which is bad news for bad guys. You're in a lot of trouble and could face a charge of tampering with evidence, even a felony, for attempting to flush, dispose of, or hide evidence from law enforcement. While plunging evidence down the toilet might look like a good idea when it's done in TV and movies, here in the real world, all it gets you is dirty hands. And it's definitely forensics.